Now, in 2017, the court awarded judgment debts against Abubakar Danladi, then a, a senator, Herman Hembe and Supluchi Ezeonwuka, uh, both members of the House of Representatives at that time. Now, in separate judgments by the apex courts, each of the federal lawmakers were sacked and ordered to return all salaries and allowances they had received while in the National Assembly. However, two years after the judgment, none of them have refunded the money. Well, I still have Obi Ajebo in the studio. She is a lawyer. Obi, this is strictly the law. And this is when you got, you, you're going to prove to me that the law works because you were saying that, <laughs> that we have laws and, you know. So you are in office. You were, you thought you won. Mm -hmm. You occupied the office. You did, you worked and then monies were being paid to you. And then somewhere down the line, another person wins the case, and then you're thrown out of office. But they're asking you to refund monies that you earned while you thought you were serving as a member of the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. How does that work? You see, that's when we say, put square pegs in square holes. And uh, they would say, no, 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 the federal character, put out this, this. What they should have done to avoid all this is, when you're sworn in, if you have a petition, they would not pay you your allowances. So they, they put would, them on hold? They would put them on hold. So what they would do is they would just give you stipend to, to, to make your stay comfortable. Mm -hmm. Then if you are confirmed, then they would now release the money and pay you off. Now, while I'm in office, I was paid money that I genuinely earned. It is not a criminal offense. There's no criminality in it. So, but now the court is saying that they have to return. I, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. Mm. Because, for example, I'm working for PLOS TV Africa, and all of a sudden they're saying, oh, you were not supposed to do PLOS politics, and you were there, so all the monies that you earned while doing PLOS politics, we need it back. But I worked. While I was on here, I wasn't just folding my arms. So... But the court has actually ruled that these monies be... I'm trying to understand that judgment. Because you're saying it's not criminal, it's not to, criminal. To, to earn money while you thought you won. It was clear that you won at the time, but then there was a petition in mm. court. Why should I pay back these monies? Of course, the court is they're threatening that they would have to go to jail. I, uh, well, you know, Nigeria, where there's no criminality, the police comes and turns it into a criminal offense. And then by the time the police keeps handing you, you either voluntarily um, give them a terms of payment or they or rush you off to jail. And then before you get your bill, you're, you spent a month or two, or if you're unfortunate, four, four or five years. Mm -hmm. But see, the, the most the government can do is institute a civil action against them for recovery of funds. I mean, because the RM, RAF, RAF, RMAFC is in charge of this. Mm. And I mean, the, the, the new assembly, the ninth assembly, they had welcome packages. Mm. Are they going to also return all of those? That's what I'm saying. If the RMFC, before any, any case against, if a police wants a member of the house, they will go to the house and tell the house that this is a warrant for person, an invitation letter for the person, please go. Likewise, I believe that anyone that has a pending suit, would the house would be informed. So it's just the, 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 requires, okay, um, this person A has a pending suit. When is the suit going to be heard? They'll send a lawyer there, confirm the judgment, and then finish just simple, just simple um, administrative work, and we still save us all this problem. But this happened way back in 2017, and we're, we're in 2019, so this is really stale. This is mm. like old, mm. and, uh, and I'm guessing, in hindsight, that these guys must have spent must all have that spent money. Spent all the money. Easy come, easy go. Exactly, <laughs> coughing out this amount of money right now might be a whole big deal. Maybe hence the reason why they haven't even. I mean, appeared in court or... Are you sure they're even in Nigeria? <laughs> wow, this is interesting. But let's look at a scenario where things worked in a society where, like you said, mm. square pegs mm. in square holes. How would we have dealt with this issue, even if this were the case as to, well, they were in office, 
they were being paid, how would it, how should he, it have played out in a saner society? In a sane society, this scenario would not have happened. Because you would know that this person has a petition against them. Even though he has an INEX certificate, there's a probability that the INEX certificate will be withdrawn. So instead of paying two people for the same position, you just um, make a provision for some, some monies pending when everything is okay. But there have, had, there have been people who have occupied offices and they have had petitions against them, but those petitions came to naught. Should monies be withheld because of a petition sometimes? You know that in Nigeria we always go to court after every election. So why hold a man's money if the man is really working and he deserves his pay as a worker? Then the, it is now for them to argue that they should prorate whatever has been paid to them. Do you understand? If they spend six months, they prorate it and they discount it. And then they give them, they will now have a term, um, a payment schedule for it, a payment schedule for it. I'm still stuck with having to pay back money for a job that you did. They were not playing, they were working. So what stops the other person from continuing from where they stopped? It is a Supreme Court decision. And there's no way to appeal this? The Supreme Court is final. Even I cannot query the Supreme Court decision. But there must be, there must be some good reasoning for them to come to that decision. I mean, we talked about Amcon and, you know, payments of monies that are being owed. Mm -hmm. In a case like this, how do you think the payment is going to happen? Or maybe these guys will have to end up in jail? That's what I'm telling you. Um, they, they've, not, they've not performed any, they've not done any criminal act. But maybe after the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, it now turns into a criminal act. I don't know. But they haven't done any criminal act. The recourse to it is the is civil court and ask them for um, money. They, they, will now, they will now say they worked for it and then it will be arguments up and down, four, five, six, seven, eight years, ten years in court and all that. Now, so one of the lawmakers um, is owing 19,058,040. Um, they received for 24 months that they spent as lawmakers. Now, there's also a fine that they're also asked to pay, which is about 1 million naira. For, and this lawmaker, Mr. Hembe, has not answered calls that have been put through to his line. He has not replied any text messages. Um, there's a one million fine that was put out to them, and I think it was against the the person who um, uh, took maybe. over the office. Yes, mm. so that fine makes it twenty million plus, and we know the economy that we're in right now, and and this is with due respect to people who run for office. There might be people who that is their, you know, where they make their monies from. They don't have other jobs mm. on the side. If the man comes and says, I don't have this money, no, I don't even have half of this money in my account, what do you think the court is going to do? What I was expecting one of them to do is to take the federal government to court. On what grounds? To challenge it. To Before it got to the Supreme Court? No, to take, to take that thing to court and file a civil suit and um, now explain that they don't, that put, put their own arguments. That's what I was expecting. Let's, uh, uh, let's play a court you know, scene mm -hmm. right now. If you were counsel to one of these people who decide to take the government to court, what grounds will they be arguing on? Um, money's end. They've worked for it. Albeit er erroneously, but they've worked for it. And then look for a clause in the Constitution to pack it up. And you think that they would get anything out of it? They will spend a good, they spend a Knowing good number what the judiciary is like They will spend a days. good number of years in, in court. And that would be monies that they don't even have. Because, of course, don't forget that the federal government is asking for 20 million plus. Uh, of and course. Interest. And they have, and in, interest, interest is accruing on it. And they have to pay you for your services, except you're doing it pro bono, which you may not. Mm -mm. Exactly. So... <laughs> There is, no, there's no, there is no saving in this case, in this matter, because one way or the other, monies have to... 
be spent. Monies have to be spent, but it's better to spend money to get yourself out of trouble than to be handed all over by the police. But if they have had, if, I'm sorry, this is a layman, I'm trying to understand. But if the Supreme Court has said these people need, either if they don't pay, they have to be behind bars. Where is the time to go to court? Will they still not be, is no, there not going it to depends, be a warrant? It depends the, the nature of the judgment. If the Supreme Court says they have to refund it, then you, you now look for a means to get them to refund it. Since it's federal government's money, you can use the police, but I don't know on what basis they would use to hint that, on what law the police would use Can to mediation that. be brought into an issue such as this? Uh, mediation is now being properly, is now being encouraged, but I've never seen mediation between federal government and anybody. I've seen mediation between individuals. Well, there's, there's mediation between federal government and there's but international mediation, but um, I haven't, or maybe I, I don't, I'm not aware of it. And do you think that if this holds sway, that subsequently, the, this kind of cases come up, the federal government will still toe this line, or maybe they would do what you have recommended? Well, um, if they keep towing this line, then they will now be hitting brick walls every time. So the best thing is, them, is for them to change the administrative structure in the house and say, those people that are, have cases, let's give them a portion of their salary pending the determination of the case. But does that not, in one way or the other, contradict laws, either the Electoral Act or the Constitution in itself, if they, because I'm sure that all of these things are done within the confines of the law? They are done, the, there's, a portion in the, uh, there's a portion in the Act that says that they should pay their remunerations and whatnot. But we, we, are, in a, we are in a fix. If not, we, we, start, we start chasing after shadows. We start chasing after pe persons, but something that since the, there's a problem and something that the, 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 the lawmakers or the lawyers that work for the lawmakers should sit down and brainstorm on a way to make it so that it will be easy for whoever is working. So that the person will not feel, I'm coming to work every day, my mates have collected their money, me, I'm not collecting any money. And also for, for them to see that the government doesn't look at. There should be a middle way. Can we... Um change something in the electoral calendar and the electoral act to reduce the number of times that we have to head to court to either contest results can we get it right from the beginning because whether we like it or not INEC is caught in the middle of all of this where does INEC need to tweak so that we can reduce the Number of times. I know that you know lawyers have a field day going to court right after the elections. It's like an, it's like a come one, come all. But how do we get the system less messier than we have it right now? We have to make sure the the the, the period between the filing of the <coughs> election petition and the dispensation of the position comes shorter. So that if so that if you if you if you are there like you said 24, 24 months twenty four months is too long for an election petition to be hanging hmm. it's too long so if we can make it maybe three months or six months then you know that for six months you would collect maybe quarter pay or half pay and use that then after that after the dispensation but you know uh, our, our electoral system is evolving. Mm -hmm. And once, once we, now this has come up, I know that very soon somebody will brainstorm on it and come to a solution. I mean, talking about the time, time frame, we see the Atiku Buhari um, court uh, election uh, petition mm -hmm. tribunal. They had so many witnesses and they barely scratched the surface of the witnesses they had mm -hmm. in the thousands of local um, wards in, across, spread across the country. So if we're shrinking the time, we're also going to shrink the amount of witnesses that you can present for your case. Look, if we front load, if we front load matters, I have a witness, I just front load the evidence the witness has to say, put it down, and then the only thing is just come and um, the witness comes within 30, 50, 30 minutes or one hour the person goes because everything has been front loaded. It makes it easier. When you say front load, for those of us who are not um, used to the court languages. What do you mean by that? 
I have a case, say I have a case against you, and um, you, you bought a car from me, you defaulted. So instead of me today, I'll bring one paper and say this is the evidence. I'll put everything together and say this is the receipt you bought it. This is the payment. This is the first check you gave me. The second check that bounced. This, this, this. So the judge has already seen the case. Mm -hmm. So just what the judge need is just a corroboration. Okay, this witness will come and say yes, this is this, this is this, this is that, and um, that is front loading. So it, eases, it reduces the time that it you spend. It reduces the time that you spend in, in, in court, and it saves a lot of time. That's why American system is very fast. How does that work? The front load. And sometimes you don't even need to come and do oral um, presentation. But, but sometimes... But they have that. a jury system, which we don't have. That's for criminal. For criminal mm -hmm. cases, okay. But for electoral... Um, cases they front load most front of the time load, yes most and so times. it shrinks the time that they yes. waste in court mm -hmm. interesting well uh, i think we just had our um law 101 with <laughs> obi ajeg well hopefully uh, we'll keep our eyes and our fingers on this particular uh, story hopefully we'll get to see if maybe they take the federal government to court or find a way to refund you the know money. since it's a supreme court decision the basis it's binding? That, the, yes, it's binding. But the basis they can go is they can now put an argument that we end this money. That's the basis they can go to court and then to see if it can be waived. If, mm. well, that's probability. But I want to thank you. Obia Jekwa mm. is a lawyer. Uh, thank you for speaking with us. Uh, we'll take a look at our plus packages. And when we come back, I'll be saying my goodbyes. This honorable committee want to make sure there's value for money. And making sure that there's value for money, those that are saddled with such position of authority must give account of it. And we are determined to make sure that the Niger Delta people that have contributed a lot to the building of this nation must have support and smile on their face. That is why we are saddled, that's why we are here. We need your cooperation. Today, I can proudly say that the Speaker of the House of Representatives is so determined to use legislative instrument to find solutions to our age-long problems. Problems that have been there for so many years, problems that Government after government have attempted to, to resolve, but were not able, probably because of insufficient, you know, um, stakeholder participation and you know uh, the right approach, you know, to, to the business. Abandonment of projects is one of the biggest challenges that we have in this country today. Be the infrastructure pro, uh, projects, health related. Environment related, as serious as they are, you have abandoned projects, you know, for so many years. And NDDC happens to be one of the worst hits among all government agencies. But I would like to say that the immediate past minister of the Niger Delta, after a protest to Mr. President on abandoned project of NDDC, was sent by the president to come to Akwaibo to inspect this project. And I would like to report to this honorable house that at that visit, the minister spoke openly at several of the locations of this abandoned project, complaining of poor supervision and all the other things. And that video recording, Mr. Chairman, will also be made available by the Quiet State Government to this committee to further guide this committee that before today, this abandoned project in case of acquiring had been highly and properly highlighted. And what has brought us here is to give our input in this public and investigative hearing over the NDDC abandoned projects. And uh, to say our bit, because we, we too have hardly benefited anything from NDDC, even though a great deal, and I want to stress the great deal of value 
is being taken from the boils of our land for the development of the rest of this country. But not much, nothing ever is being put back. Well, these conversations will keep going on and on and on. We are trying as much as possible to make a great Nigeria out of what we have. And questions have to be asked. People have to go to jail. And the law must take its full course. I am Mary Anacom. It's been Plus Politics. <laughs>